Hey guys, if you own a Defiant Wing, then you know I include a diagram and instructions on how to lay out your sparring. But if you're interested in why, then you've come to the right place, because that's our topic for today. What's up guys? A flying wing can be subjected to an awful lot of stress, um, even before the inevitable crash. And that's uh, something that people have asked me a lot about. Uh, the design of the wing, the structural design, uh, the materials that the, the foam and the spars and the sizing of those. So I figured we'd go ahead and we'd do our first video uh, on wing structure design. And no discussion of structural design really uh, can get started without really understanding the forces at play. And there are several different forces at play um, on a flying wing like this, but we're really going to concentrate on, on three major forces. The first of which is the vertical forces that are acting uh, through the wing. So the first of those is going to be the weight. It's going to be gravity pulling this wing down, especially uh, in the center of the wing. This is, uh, I've enlisted the aid of my uh, double D here, defi double defiant 28, uh, twin motor 28, just to, uh, to demonstrate this. So here in the middle of the wing, we've got the motors, we've got the, the predominance of the electronics, we've got the big heavy battery. So all of our weight, or the, the, the bulk of our weight, is here in the middle of the wing, and that's going to be a force that's going to be pushing down. To oppose this force, we've got the lift that this wing generates when it's at speed. Now, the lift is generated over the wings, um, and because this is a flying wing, and flying wings uh, are very efficient because the center body actually lifts uh, and not like a traditional aircraft where the center is really doesn't do anything but generate drag. So we're generating lift throughout this entire structure. And that lift is going to be pointing, is going to be pushing up on these wings. Now the lift distribution on a wing like this where we have a tapered wing, we're actually generating less lift out here on the, on the tips of the wing because there's uh, a thinner section and less cord, um, which is a good thing because the force that's generated further out has a longer lever arm and actually can generate more bending moment uh, in this wing. So these, the first set of stresses we're looking at here are the, you know, the weight pushing down balanced by the lift pushing up. And what you're seeing is that force is going to want to cause this wing to bend in, to bow in. These outside edges are going to want to curl up. Okay. Now that's uh, in a in a one G situation uh, when we're just cruising normal and level um, and not accelerating in any direction. Um, there's really not that much stress, and the foam alone probably could handle that stress. But most of us are not flying in that steady level condition and if we are we're not doing it for very long so accelerating uh, in any direction really is going to cause a lot more stress to be put on this anytime this wing banks into a turn the mass is going to want to keep moving in the same direction it was and we're trying to accelerate that wing through the turn that's going to increase the stress um, and it's not unusual for us to go into, you know, two, three, maybe even four G's. And when we're starting to talk about that much force on this, we need to start looking seriously at the reinforcing. Uh, otherwise, we end up with taco time. Um, so that's really our principal design stress uh, is going to be the bending, vertical bending stress in these. Uh, another stress that we need to take a look at, um, we have the motors here, is, is a longitudinal forces. 
we've got the motors here in the center of the wing pushing forward and then we've got the rest of the wing coming out to the tip and there's going to be a drag force placed on you know on this wing all the way out to the tips it's going to want to bend this wing back okay now this is really a minor force uh, particularly at the speeds that we're going um, the other reason it's not as major of a force is because we have so much more thickness here that gives us much more moment of inertia across here to resist that bending so that's really not as big of a stress but it's one that we want to be cognizant of and if we were flying at two three four hundred miles an hour certainly something we'd want to design for the third load condition that we want to look at is twist okay where this wing is going to want to twist front to back okay uh, but as you'll see when we look at this a little closer you'll see that really that's nothing more than a bending force uh, opposite bending forces one in the front and one in the back so our reinforcing will take care of that okay now that we have the forces uh, figured out on this what we need to do is take a look at the mechanics of bending uh, and that we're going to do over on the workbench okay so what we have here is a little bending demonstration uh, I've got a piece of uh, 1.3 EPP foam uh, this is the foam I use on the Defiant 28. I've drawn a number of graduations that are all parallel. And we've got this one line here, which is the negative bending axis. So what you're going to notice as I push down on this, especially here in the middle, is that our parallel lines are not parallel anymore. Um, at the top, these lines have gotten closer together and at the bottom they've gotten further apart. So what's happening here is as we bend, the further we get away from that neutral bending axis, the fibers on the bottom are in tension, so they're pulling apart. And the fibers on top are in compression, so they're pushing together. Uh, as they push together, the lines get closer together at the top and likewise at the bottom. Uh, this is how um, bending works in a beam uh, and essentially a wing is just that it's a beam so uh, what we're seeing is that the fibers at the top are not strong enough to resist the compression so they they compress and the fibers at the bottom will elongate because they're not strong enough uh, to resist that tension so you can this shows you why the foam is not strong enough alone without the reinforcing in fact this is about twice uh, the section the width of uh, of a 28 wing um, this is probably approaching the sectional thickness of a 63 um, if we were to turn this on its side you'll see that it takes far less pressure to bend it um, because we have less thickness here we have less moment of inertia uh, we have less material to resist that bending okay from our bending demonstration you can see the mechanics of how the foam bends and all the foam all the EPP foam acts very similarly uh, even even though they may be different densities on the 28 I use a 1.3 pound EPP foam which is a little bit lighter it's a little more flexible and honestly I think it crashes a little bit better um, the larger wings I'm using a stiffer 1.9 pound EPP foam and that's a density 1.9 pounds per cubic foot uh, of foam so that's a little bit denser but really you're going to see the properties are very similar so we're going to have to reinforce these wings somehow and there are a couple of different ways uh, one way is uh, a more of a traditional method which is something you're going to see in, in traditional foam airplanes and that is to use a very large stiff spar usually right down the middle of the wing and what you're doing in this case is that you're deriving the stiffness of the wing directly from the stiffness of the rod 
And this isn't a bad method. It works well on these type of these wings. This is a wing off a, off a penguin uh, that Josh Noon gave me. Uh, but there are some drawbacks to this. Uh, this plane isn't designed to do the kind of things that our EPP wings are designed to do. So the drawbacks of, of one large spar in here is that it can be heavy. Okay, that's a, that's a large chunk that you have to put in here to make this wing stiff. And if you want to go light, then you have to go with something like carbon fiber or carbon fiber tube. The problem with that. Uh, is that the carbon fiber then becomes very expensive. Carbon fiber tube to fit into a large wing is going to be an expensive tube. Um, the other thing is that you're going to have a continuous tube. So now you have to have a box that's big enough to ship that tube in. Now shipping gets a little more expensive. Uh, the other thing that you want to look at too is that these large stiff spars actually are not all that durable and they tend to crack and break in a crash because there's no flex in them. They're very, very rigid. The other thing is that having just this single spar in the middle is not going to help us with any kind of twist. So as this wing twists, this single spar in the middle really is not going to resist that uh, in any way. Not a bad method, but just not the right method for the type of wings that we're working with here. Okay, so what do we do? Well, we're going to use one of these. Or actually, we're going to use a bunch of these. This little flexible fiberglass rod is what we're going to use to reinforce the wings. Now, uh, this is where I get asked a lot of questions. And one of the biggest uh, questions I get is, why do you use these white fiberglass uh, reinforcing spars? Why don't you just use carbon fiber like everybody else? Um, and, and I have a couple of answers uh, to that. First off, um, If you look closely, I think you'll find that most of the suppliers or manufacturers are actually using um, fiberglass. This is a piece of black fiberglass rod and a piece of white fiberglass rod. They are exact uh, in, uh, in every facet except that one is dyed black and one is white. Um, so I think you'll find that most of the wings being manufactured right now are actually using fiberglass rods. I think people uh, just, you know, think they're carbon fiber because they're black. I know most of the manufacturers use the black. I prefer the white, uh, and i tell you why. Because when you embed these in a wing and then you go and paint them, uh, it's harder to cover the black spars with the paint. So you actually end up putting extra coats over that area. Whereas with a white spar, it blends in with a white wing and covers much easier, easy, more easily, easier, easierly, easier. So that's why I end up using the white spars. Okay, so the second question I get asked a lot um, is why are we using fiberglass instead of carbon fiber? And there really are, there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, carbon fiber is a great material. It's stiff. It's much stiffer uh, than fiberglass. Uh, it's actually stronger in tension and compression uh, than fiberglass. Um, but the main reason we're not using it, uh, one is it's much more expensive. Um, it's, it's twice the cost of the fiberglass. But the chief reason we don't is that because it's so much stiffer, it's not as durable as fiberglass. The carbon fiber will actually fracture and break faster than the fiberglass will in a crash. Uh, because it's stiff, it's not as durable. Uh, a couple other reasons. It's conductive, which is not as big a deal on a foam wing, um, but it can interfere with RF. So you could have some radio frequency issues by having these carbon fiber rods in your wing. Um, so we've uh, we use the the fiberglass instead okay so now we've we worked out that we're using these fiberglass rods the question is 
how are we deriving all this strength and this uh, reinforcement in these foam wings from something that's as flexible as this, okay? We're building what's called a composite structure. And in a composite structure, we're using multiple materials and we're using, utilizing them for certain properties, okay? The foam is a great bed for the wings. It's very durable. It's easy to cut. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive, um, but it can't handle bending stress very well. And we saw in that demonstration that as the foam uh, bends, the outer fibers in compression and in tension fail, um, and, and we get this sag in the wing. The way to get around that is to embed these carbon, these fiberglass spars. Now, the fiberglass is actually very strong in tension, in compression, and in tension. Um, 125,000 PSI. Um, so for a piece of rod like this, which is 0.08 inches, which is the size that I use for the 28 and the 42, uh, you're looking at 600 pounds in comp tension. So you could actually hang 600 pounds off this single little rod uh, before it pulled apart and broke, and about 500 pounds in compression. So more than enough uh, for the application. Um, yes, carbon fiber is stronger in tension and compression, but again, you're paying for uh, strength that you're never going to use. Um, and, and I think the durability of the fiberglass far outweighs um, that extra strength that you might get uh, from carbon fiber. What we've done is we've embedded these fiberglass rods into the wing in a very specific manner so that we can utilize the properties of these rods um, to our best advantage. This is a 1.9 pound EPP wing from a uh, 42, and I've laid in the black fiberglass rods. Uh, I've, I've used the black so you can actually see the layout. So we have the forward spars here, and you'll notice that they are stacked exactly one on top of the other. And for this method to work, these really need to be stacked on top of each other. Um, basically, what we're doing is we're forming what people refer to as an I-beam construction. Uh, it's actually closer to a reinforced concrete beam, but you get the idea. So we have them along the front, and then we have a second set here along the back. This is top and bottom, so you can see the same layout, and they lay out directly above each other. And so what we're doing here is we're allowing the fiberglass with its really great compression and tension strength to take up that tension and compression that the foam can't handle on its own. At the same time, we're keeping the ring the wing very light because these this we're using you know a minimal amount of reinforcing. Um, another thing you'll notice is that we have the the reinforcing in the front and in the back. And this does a couple of things. One is that extra set, that longitudinal force that we were talking about before, where the wing wanted to fold back. Well, now we've done the same thing. We have spars here taking that tension force across the top and the compression force across the bottom as this wing tries to fold back. The third thing that we've done is we've taken care of that twisting. Okay, now if you take a look at as I twist this wing, okay, you're going to see bending in the front and bending in the back. And that's what that twist is. You've got, as, as I bend it this way, as I bend it back, you're going to see the front of the wing bend up and the rear of the wing bend down. And that bending is being resisted um, by this reinforcing the same way it would if we we're bending that wing this way. Um, this third spar you're seeing in here really is just the half spar, but this is the main spar that goes across the entire wing uh, that ties to the center section and ties to the other wing. Now that we've discussed 
uh, why we use uh, these fiberglass rods um, to stiffen the wing and, and really it, it does an amazing job but now you understand why. Um, one thing we didn't talk about is, is the sizing of these. Uh, and you'll find that these are different sizes as I go up to say the 63 I'm actually using a bigger rod um, and that's not because I think it's going to give me more strength or less strength. Uh, in fact, I know that you know it's going to give me more strength and tension and compression than I need, than I can use. Uh, but one thing it's going to do is it's going to give me more surface area, which means that I have more area for my glue to adhere to, to keep to better keep that uh, spar from slipping. Uh, if that spar slips and breaks loose, then you've lost all of the, the, the gains of having that spar in there. What we have set up here is a, a wing from a Define 42. This is a 1.9 pound EPP foam, and I have it clamped down over here. And then a couple inches away, I have this second rod, uh, the second piece of wood. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, reel of uh, MIG wire, which weighs about two pounds. In fact, it says right there, two pounds. And we're going to set that on the wing. Now first, we're going to take a measurement and see where we are here. And we are at uh, 58 millimeters. And then I'm going to set this on right here at the tip. And you're going to see that that two pounds bends that wing down. And if we look at it again here, uh, we are at about 12 millimeters. So it's dropped quite a bit. Here is our reinforced wing. Um, I'm going to take it off. I'll show you this has the reinforcing in it. And I've measured it. And... We are at 65 millimeters in the back. Now when I go ahead and set this two pound roll on here again, you're going to see that we drop very little. In fact, we are at about 57 millimeters. So we've dropped about eight millimeters. Uh, as opposed to that large drop we saw in the foam by itself. So this is much more rigid, um, much stiffer, just by adding in a couple of pieces of this reinforcing fiberglass rod. The last part of the composite construction I wanted to talk about is the laminate. And we use this clear plastic laminate um, that's included with the kits that goes on the wing. Now this is a 3 mil lamb which is included in the Defiant 28, the 42 and the 63 um, are all using the, the 5 mil which is a heavier lamb. And the idea of this with the lamb is is really uh, it's a protective coating. Um, the EPP foam is kind of friable, so a couple of hard landings, you know, on a heavy plane, you're going to chew it up. Um, another thing is that it really cuts down on the resistance, the air resistance, the friction over the wing. You get a nice smooth laminar flow over the wing. And it also is going to provide um, some structural rigidity, again, because not so much, as you can see, not so much in compression. Uh, but in tension, um, once it's heated up and it shrinks, it, it does have some pretty good tension, um, which is going to just help make the wing a little bit stiffer, tie the whole wing together. Um, the, the primary advantage of the, uh, of the laminate is that when we encase the wing in it, and we build this shield around the wing, we, we actually end up creating what is, is loosely considered a tube structure. Uh, and a tube structure is kind of a circular structure that is very good at resisting torque, torsion. Um, so that means that it's really going to help that twisting in the wing. 
we can really eliminate and lock down that twist uh, just with the laminate because of the way it adheres to the wing and the way it will resist the shear. Uh, so that's really the, the one of the main reasons behind the laminate. Um, aside from, you know, the, the, uh, the encasing and protecting of the wing itself. Okay, so now we have our reinforced wing section with the laminate on it. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but we've got a nice layer of five mil laminate on here. And we'll go ahead and measure the back. And uh, we're sitting a little higher on this one. It's 70 millimeters. And if we go ahead and put our weight on here, we, uh, we drop down to about 65 millimeters. So uh, the, re the laminate gave us a little more reinforcing. Uh, we only dropped five millimeters instead of eight. Um, but you can tell it's not nearly the reinforcing properties of the fiberglass bars themselves. But it does give us a little extra reinforcing in the wing and gives us uh, this really nice hard outer coating. Uh, to keep the wing from getting hacked up uh, on those landings or those uh, unavoidable, unavoidable uh, scraggle encounters. There were a couple other points I wanted to, I wanted to talk about um, or just mention. Um, and a couple of them are hotbed items. Uh, one of them, uh, which seems to be a, a big item of contention within the groups, is what type of glue is best uh, to glue the spars in. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that for another video. Uh, honestly, I don't know what the best glue is. Uh, I know what I like to use. Um, and, and it's, you know, it's, I've used different glues and, and I still use different glues depending on the wing. But what I'd really like to do is do another video where um, we take a bunch of uh, tests of different glues and try and design uh, some tests that mimic real world environment and and then try these three four five different types of glue um, and see uh, see what the results are um, and I'm sure people are going to you know we're going to stand by theirs um, but what I'd really like to do is you know, at least for the newer guys, put that information out there and let them make their own decision based on the facts. Okay, and not, and not, uh, you know, well, I do it this way because I've always done it this way. Somebody told me to do it this way and that's why I do it that way. Uh, I'd like to put that information out and, and let those guys make that decision for themselves. Uh, another one is um, instead of laminate, a lot of guys are using um, like extreme packing tape um, or the heavy-duty scotch packing tape. Um, I know, you know a lot of guys use that and really prefer that method. Again, um, I've never used that method personally and uh, maybe that's a topic for another video, a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, I like to look at things, uh, what I call the three abilities of, of flying wings, uh, buildability, flyability and crashability. Um, some things may crash really well but are really hard uh, to do on the building side. Uh, some things may be quick and easy on the build and they work great flying, uh, they just don't crash so well. So I think what we'll do is uh, we'll save that as topic uh, for another video. As always guys, I uh, really appreciate your comments down below. Uh, let me know what you thought of the video. If you have any questions, um, please put them down below and I will do my best to answer them. If you have topics for future videos, then please put them down below or message me. Let me know. Um, honestly, I, I don't mind thumbs down. If you feel the need to hit the thumbs down button, go right ahead. But do me a favor and put in the comments why, what you didn't like what I need to improve on so that I can make this a little bit better. Um, and I guess we'll go ahead and end it here. So click that like button if you so choose. Subscribe if you weren't already, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.
So what we have here is the wing with the re- Oh, damn it, dog. What the hell? Did you shit yourself? God. So what we have here, it's, it's, yeah, that's uh, easy for me to say. So one method of reinforcing is to use it. Uh, really? That's it, I've had enough. <laughs>